Well, hey, I want to say thank you all for joining us once again on our Tuesday night family and friends Bible study. Yes, we have Bible study even on Valentine's Day. Uh, but with that being said, I, I do want to say happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Uh, I know that uh, quite a few people are probably uh, flooding uh, restaurants, you know, on the account that someone uh, determined that today uh, is the day that signifies love. Uh, however, the reality is that every day with the Lord should uh, put us in remembrance uh, that he paid it all uh, and he paid it all on the basis of love. And that's uh, John 3, 16. Uh, so next year, fellas, remember this, keep this in mind uh, before you go spending all your money uh, on gifts and dinner. Uh, tell your special someone uh, that this year uh, we can go hang out with the one who paid it all. Uh, and hopefully that works for you. Hopefully uh, she'll have a little grace for you. Um, listen, uh, one of the challenges that I believe a lot of ministers uh, encounter uh, is expounding on, on what it means to be like God. Uh, you know, we commonly talk about it. You know, we preach about it. Uh, but the reality is not always taught. Uh, and, and I'm a firm believer in the practicality of God's word. Uh, I believe that the word of God should be both mysterious and practical. Uh, what I mean by mysterious, you know, because God wants us to pursue him. Uh, and it's in that pursuit that he reveals more of himself uh, to us. Practical, uh, because I believe that the expectation is that we live the word of God out. And so it has to be practical. Uh, and for the past few weeks, uh, we have been in a powerful series called God the Giver, and I believe this series uh, is doing just that, is showing us how to be more like God. And so with that being said, I, I want to introduce, uh, once again, he's no stranger to us, a, a friend, a mentor of mine, uh, Dr. Timothy Williams of Words of Life Teaching Ministries. Uh, sir, looking forward to what you're going to share on tonight, and the floor is yours. Amen, amen. God, thank you for your grace and your power, your anointing. Speak your voice, teach your word, empower your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you. And I love my wife. Uh, I love the Lord. So I get all the love in on the front end. And, <laughs> and so we can uh, jump into the word. You know, we've been talking about God the giver. You know, like, like Dexter men mentioned, you know, our purpose and everything that we do is to be like him. Some people think that, that we can't be like him. That's not a truth. We can be like him. We can grow and be more like God every day of our life. And uh, uh, like he mentioned, a lot of times we don't teach people that that is a possibility for them, that they can they can walk in love, that they can uh, they, they can forgive like God does, that they can do the miraculous like God uh, 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 demonstrates in scripture that men are able to do. Even as Christ said, you know, the works that I do, shall you do also. So look, we're in this thing where God is trying to conform us to the image of Christ. He's trying to take us to this uh, destiny that he has where all of his sons and his daughters, okay, uh, 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 are examples of Christ to other people that are in the earth. So what we want to pursue, I, I love that word, we are pursuing God. We want to pursue every nature of God, every aspect of who he is, every 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 fiber, every aroma of who God is, we want to pursue that because we know that that is our purpose. We that is our design. We've been designed in the image of God, so that is our design. One of the areas that we uh, tend to not uh, mimic God. Uh, and it's, it's for a lot of different reasons. I don't so much want to jump into that. But one of the areas where we don't mimic God in spirit the way we should. Now, notice what I said in spirit. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. See, what we've been doing in this whole area of giving is that we've been doing it by the letter, you know, by the law, by the, the, this, this ritual that we have, that we have obligation to give uh, either for, you know, for, for whatever reasons that we have it. And so what we uh, have been trying to do in this series and series and talking about God the giver is help you understand the spirit of giving. You know, I was telling Dexter, he and I were having a text exchange and I was saying, you know, we've got to stop being apologetic about telling people about giving. 
because we think, you know, they think we're twisting our arm or, or, or forcing them to do because that is what they've experienced every time you talk about giving in, in, in the environment, most of the times in the church. It is like, you know, uh, 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 it is something that you have to do, you should do, you're required to do. And, and if you don't do it, then there's something terrible, you know, associated with you as a Christian. I I'm, I'm, I refuse to be under that anymore. After after that conversation exchange with with Dexter, I said I'm not gonna I'm not gonna minister under the impression or uh, uh, under the uh, the the cover that telling people about giving, you know, makes them sad or makes them mad or gets them upset. No, no. no. Let me tell you something. What we're giving you and what we're talking to you about and what Dexter is allowing through this ministry is good news. Glory to God, giving and the ability to be able to give is good news, okay? It is not a punishment. It is not something that is, uh, to a certain extent, the God, God doesn't even see it as a sacrifice, okay? He sees it as what this scripture, and we're going to talk about tonight, as a blessing, a gift to be able to give. And we've been, we talked about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and we're going to go back through that tonight. Uh, to see that it is actually something we ought to get excited about. Glory to God. And I know in some ministries, everybody, you know, they say, hey, get up, let's give. Everybody kind of clap and yell. Well, they kind of mimic that. But many people go and, and function in that out of letter and not out of spirit. I'm trying to share with you and I want to show with you how to do this by spirit because spirit starts with motive. Okay. And we talked about how God is a giver. We said, why give? Well, the reason we want to give is because God is a giver. And if God is a giver, why does God give? God doesn't give because he's under obligation. God doesn't give because he's been commanded to. God doesn't give because he has needs. God doesn't give because of any requirement, okay, except for he's a giver. <laughs> it is his nature. It is like, the, like water being wet. You can't get the wet out of water. That is the way God is. God cannot do anything but to give. And he's placed that same nature in us. But there's a benefit to it. It is not just to get from you, okay? It is for you to receive a blessing, okay? A blessing that uh, uh, you can't get any other way. Jesus said this. He says, more blessed to give. Uh, we talked about Jesus saying that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. I gave you all the incident with me where we gave a young lady uh, uh, $50 and it blessed us tremendously to see the impact that $50 can have on a person who has a need or either has a desire or in, in the thanksgiving that goes to God when we do that. Let me tell you this, you ought to want to know about that. And we ought to be wanting to tell you about that. And that is why we're doing this. So what I want to talk to you about We've already learned that God's purpose for giving is love, okay? He's a lover, so that is why he gives. But what I want to talk to you about is about this grace of giving. We started and looked at it, and you get your Bible, and you go to 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, 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 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 8, and we're going to start at verse 1. I want to talk to you about abounding in the grace of giving. We started it last week, but I want to show you some things in this passage that can give you insight into what, how do you go about abounding in the grace of giving? You know, the Bible says that we ought to. Look at, look at this passage of scripture like right here. I'm going to read it. It says, moreover, brother, this verse one, we do, and I'm reading in the King James, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on us on the churches of Macedonia, how that in great trials of afflictions, abundance of their joy, and their deep poverty abounded to the riches of their liberality. For to their power th that they bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying with us, much with much entreated that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. Here lies the purpose of giving. OK, giving is to minister or to give or to supply or to meet the needs of other people. Now, I know, you know, we say uh, that, that you know, uh, uh, you need to bring all your tithes into the storehouse that they may be meat in my house. All right. God don't need no meat in his house. OK, God got all the meat that he need in his house. What he wants us to do is participate and minister to the saints. Now you say, well, wait a minute, we're talking about you mean his how. What I'm saying to you is that even when we give to ministries, 
Our motive is not to keep the lights on. Our motive is not to pay the pastor. Our motive is not because we require to, and y'all need to do this because if we don't, we're going to shut it down. No, no, no. We are the soul in that respect because the ministry itself is supplying the needs of the saints that are there in that local fellowship. That should be your motive. Now you can give for any other reason that you want to, but that should be your motive. If if, if, if it's about paying bills, if it, and now you say, well, brother, don't they have to pay deal? Yes, they do have to pay bills, but motive matters. So your motive has to be given to your local fellowship because they are functioning in a position to be able to meet the needs of saints, meet the needs of the people that attend there, meet your needs if you're there. The pastor, well, why should he reap? He should reap because he's sowing his gift and his calling to meet the needs of the people that are there. That should be your motive. So it says, take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. Now, if you if you if, if you remember over in Acts chapter four, it talks about an instance when this thing happened when the church first started, when they had all the people. The scripture says in Acts chapter four thirty two, it said that they had all come together and that they had nothing that they would hold. I'm paraphrasing, nothing that they would withhold from one another. That many so that had much would sell their lands and, and our property and bring that to the church. And then the scripture says in verse thirty five, and they laid them down. Down at the apostles' feet, and distribution is made unto every man according as he had need. See, the principle is there that giving should be about not this peripheral or even this uh, 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 mechanical process of, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you need to do that. No, no. The motive has to be the end result, which is that when we give, it blesses those that we are given to, and the greater blessing is ours but it's because we give. So here it is, what this scripture says is that we ought to take upon ourselves the fellowship or the partnership of ministering to the saints. So it talks about abounding in the grace of giving. Take a look at uh, uh, verse six. Let's keep going down. Well, let's look at verse uh, number five. And this they did not as we hope, but first gave their own self to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Verse six, insomuch that we denied, we desired Titus that he had begun, so he would also finish in you this same grace also. Therefore, here's what I want you to get to. We said this last, I'm going to repeat. Therefore, as you abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in diligence, and in your love towards us, see that you abound in this grace also. Now, the word abound means to be in excess, to superabound in quantity and quality. So here it is. He wants us to abound in this grace of giving. Now, don't you know, don't get mixed up right here, right now, because you say, he, you know, well, we're saying we're supposed to give more. We need to give a lot. No, no, no. You have found out that abundance in the spirit is not about quantity. It's about heart. <laughs> it's not about quantity. It is about heart. So what we want to do, it doesn't, let me tell you, people, it doesn't matter how much money you got. Okay. It doesn't matter how much you're able to give. It, that doesn't matter. Okay. What you want to do is amplify your giving by having a heart to give. It doesn't matter. See, God doesn't care. I hate, you know, people would be, would be mad at me for saying this, but God doesn't care so much about the amount. Why? Because the amount that you give, he can multiply any amount and make it anything he wants it to be or anything that you desire it to be. What he cares about is your heart giving him the avenue to be able to do that. See, if your heart is not abounding in giving, then he cannot supplement or partner with you to allow your giving to abound, okay? And that is what you want to do. Most people, many people, they give with the wrong heart, okay? They're giving a lot, but they're giving with the wrong heart. And when you're giving with the wrong heart, or you're, it's not really a gift, it is an exchange of funds. That's all it is, right? You're just transferring money from your hand to somebody else, and it, 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 it is devoid of the power of giving, okay? So he says he wants you to abound in this grace 
or this gift. That is what the word grace means. This gift of giving also. Giving ought to be a gift. <laughs> okay. You, you ought to be as happy about the opportunity to give as you are when somebody hands you a gift. He's saying, hey, look, God gives us this ability. It is a gift to be able to give. So how do you abound in the grace of giving? First of all, look at verse number eight. It says, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of your forwardness or your diligence of others to prove the sincerity of your love. If you're going to abound in the grace of giving, you can't do it by commandment. Okay. You can't do it legally. Now you say, well, wait a minute, brother. We got tithes, we got offering, we got sacrifice, we got you know all this different stuff that we talk about and about the uh, uh, how and what is motivated, how we've been taught has to be the instruments by which we are giving. However, all of that was by commandment. Okay, there were laws and letters, and God uh, had stringent uh, 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 rules, regulations, what we would call them, in how they should give in the old covenant. And you said, well, brother, don't we deal with that today? I'm just telling you, no, we don't, okay? We are not under the letter. God has put us in a position where our hearts, we don't have to be forced to do a thing that our hearts have now been renewed to be able to do. See, back then, they didn't have a given heart. They didn't have hearts, okay, like our hearts that have been renewed. We've been transformed. Jesus has made us a new creature. So now what God has done, he allows us grace to be able to do what is spiritual, what we have the ability to do. However, in the old covenant, okay, he put the letter and the law there but so that they would know what to do. Look, the scripture says that we become a law unto, our, unto ourselves because we are motivated in our heart. They didn't have a heart that could do the law. So God had to put the law in place for them to follow. If we want to go back to that, then we're in a situation where we're not going to bow. Okay. And most people, that is what they're experiencing right now. When they give, they give by letter. And you know what? They're not seeing abundance. They're not seeing about. Are you seeing blessing? Of course, you're going to see blessing, right? They're, but I'm talking about super abundance, like this is talking about. It's not going to happen if you're going to do it by commandment, okay? Look at verse number 11. You have to, to abound in the grace of giving. You have to have a willing mind, willing heart, willing uh, a, a willing motive. Now, what does that mean? That basically means, let me read it. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was once a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. For if there be first a will in mind, it is accepted according to a man what a man hath, and not according to that he have not. In the Amplified, that verse 12 says that there is an eager readiness to give. Our eager readiness to give is there when you are presented with the opportunity to give. That's what it means to have a will in mind. Now, look, in the old covenant, you, you know, the, the, the old covenant, you know, it was types and shadows, okay, of the things which is to come. And you know what? There were laws there, but there were instances when God gave them an opportunity to practice what was to come. Let me give you an example. Look at Exodus chapter 25 and verse one. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. You take my offering and this is the offering which you shall take of them, gold, silver, brass, blue, uh, um, and all the things. I don't want to go through and read all of that. Here's the point. And let them make a sanctuary, verse number eight, a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. There are multiple scriptures I can read, uh, it's probably six or seven of them, where God took them out of the law and said, let those who have a will and heart do. Okay, it's not by commandment. It's not because I'm telling you to do it, but take the offering and if they want to give, they can. If they don't want to give, they don't have to. That's what willing is, okay? You have to be willing to do it. Now you say there are instances where God said, no, 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 you bring everything in it that there'll be meat in my house or you'll be cursed with a curse. Okay, that is letter. 
but he gave them opportunity. Here's an example of what is to come when man will give with a willing heart. Now look at verse number 12. Here's the one that is really can be confusing. If you're going to abound in the grace of, uh, grace of giving, this may be contrary to what you have had have, or have heard, but it has to be according to your ability. Okay, look at verse number eight. I don't want to say it has to be. That's the wrong way to say it. Okay. It's okay to give according to your ability. That's what I want to say too. Look, verse 12, it says, for there, if there be first, why? If there's a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man had and not according to that he had not. See, it doesn't matter. I, I say quantity. It doesn't matter about quantity. Uh, 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 but uh, what, what, it just doesn't. Okay. Whatever you have and you purpose in your heart to give, God will accept that. Okay. Because he sees your heart. Most people don't realize is that they can give $3 and desire to give millions and God account that three as million. Okay, you'll see, we'll see that in just a minute in scripture. What I'm saying to you is that what amplifies, what magnifies, what gives quantity to your gift is not the amount that you give, but the heart that you have when you actually give it. In Acts chapter 11, verse 29, it says the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brother who was dwelt in Judea. There was a world, a world famine going on at that particular time. And so look, it was what they had the ability to do. I've seen people uh, give beyond their ability and they give in fear and they don't give in faith. Actually, they're very much afraid to give, although they move forward in giving. It is not out of faith, it's actually out of fear that they are actually doing. They're doing it beyond what they're able to. And so in those situations, be mindful. I'm not saying there have been, there have been instances when God has prompted my heart to do something beyond what I had. You know, uh, something I'm, I, I, I may have had need for something else and I take that and give and sow that. God has always returned that to me. That has all, because that is that is his, his purpose. But here it is, what this is saying to you, is that don't be limited in your giving because you don't think you have, okay? You can give according to your ability. The word ability there actually means what you possess, okay? What you are possessed with or what you have hold of. Make a decision in your own heart and give because of those things. If you remember in uh, Mark chapter 12, uh, the scripture says uh, in verse 41, it says, and Jesus set over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast in money, money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. There's quantity. And there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites. That's quantity, which makes a farthing. And he called unto him his disciple. It was so impressive of the Lord that he used it as a teaching opportunity for his disciples. So look at that. Look at this. Verily I say unto you, truly, truly, I say unto you that this poor widow has cast more than all they which have cast into the treasure. For all they did cast in out of their abundance. Okay. But she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. See, she gave more, she gave more because she gave it all than they gave when their portion that they gave was more than she gave, but they only gave a part of their living. See, your heart, she was willing to give it all. And that is what caused her to be in abundance in her giving. Now, I want to go over and switch over and look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Because verse uh, chapter eight begins the process, but it is uh, the, the, this teaching is actually finalized in Second Corinthians chapter nine. How else? What else do you have to be sure of if you're going to take and abound in the grace of giving? Look at verse five. You have it has to not be a matter of bounty and not of covetousness. Verse five. Therefore, I thought it necessary. So exhort the brethren that they would go before you and make up beforehand your bounty. 
whereof you had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. What he's saying here, bounty it means fine speaking or elegant language is what bounty means. Covetous means that it's, it's fraudulent, it's been extorted from you, okay? So what he's saying is that, look, we just want to speak encouragement to you, and we want to make sure that the gift that you give is not, is out of bounty of, of us influencing you in a uh uh in a in a in a in a in a in a uh uh in a way that does not feel like extortion okay because if we talk to you in a way so that you take and transfer money to us because you feel like you've been extorted okay you can't abound in this grace of giving okay you can't get there so this this whole word uh, uh, extortion and you know I, I i see that you see it almost you know most places you go we 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 see extortion taking place from the pulpits and in churches when it comes to giving you know i've been in, in churches in many many years ago i've been in churches where when they didn't get enough they keep asking for the offering they just stand there and keep you know, having people come, keep beating up people until they got what they needed. They wouldn't move forward until they had everything that they need or what they thought they should have. Well, you know what? That That's not God. That's not God's attitude, okay? So it's not according to quantity, okay? It's not according, you shouldn't be extorted. If you're going to abound in the grace of giving, then your gift should not be one that has been extorted from you or your motive is because you uh 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 in some kind of way uh, uh people are coveting what you have and causing you to transfer that to you to them the other thing is that you uh you have to give bountifully now bountifully in the scripture in this passage is not like we talked about i've said that it's not about the amount that you give this is what it says Verse six, but this I say, he was so sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Then he was so bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now look what he said. Every man, according as he's purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Bountiful giving is one that is done cheerfully. OK, it is done according to what you purposed in your heart. So if you go before God and say, God, you know, I want to give and you purpose in your heart that you're going to give 50, 20 dollars, let's say 20 dollars. OK, but then I go over and I purpose in my heart that God, you know what? My desire, my hope is to give to you and I hear your voice. I'm going to give 10 dollars. OK, God sees those no different. Okay, he sees that no different. You know why? Because he's looking at what you purpose in your heart. I had my brother start with five dollars. Okay, five dollars, man. Just start. Don't worry about. It. Don't be pressured. Just start with five dollars and give that in love. Give that in compassion for people. Give that out of a desire to help other people. And before long, he was giving. He was tithing on the money that he was able to, that he, that uh, that he was giving uh, to 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 the fellowship where he where he was. So bountiful giving is not about quantity. It is about the intent of your heart. Okay, purpose means to choose. Grudgingly, if you give grudgingly, means you're giving in grief, okay, with heaviness and sadness and sorrow or out of fear. Well, you don't want to do that. That is not how you actually abound in the grace of giving. Now, here's the big deal right here, okay? When you do those things that I've talked about, there is a benefit, okay? It's not that you're doing this without a return. You know, there is a benefit spiritually where it is just a sensation that you have and experience when you bless another person. If you've ever do it, done it and it helped them, you know that sensation of spiritual flow that happens when you're blessing another person. Man, that is blessing in and of itself, but it is not the only thing you receive. This is what God says in verse number eight. In chapter nine, and God is able when you abound in the grace of giving, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have in all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. 
As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, verse 9. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Do you see that? Okay, this is the benefit of abounding in the grace of giving. Now, here it is. There's no quantity on this. Okay, God gives seed to the sower. He multiplies the seed that is sown. Look, he gives seed to the sower. He doesn't give seed to the one that has not chosen to sow. Okay, if you choose to sow, even if you don't have it, you say, well, I just don't have it. That's fine. That's fine. Just choose to sow. OK, choose to say in your heart, I'm going to be a sower. Glory to God. I'm going to be a giver. It's not going to be a function of what I have. It's going to be a function of my heart. And God, I desire and I am a sower. And God will give you seed to sow. Lord, have mercy. Can you see that? He will give you the seed you need to begin to abound in the grace of giving. Not only that, bread for your food. He'll multiply your seed song. He'll increase the fruit of your righteousness. And when he does that, when that happens, you being enriched in everything to all bountifulness causes through us thanksgiving to God. Think about, think about if you had all of this, if, if all of a sudden God gave you all the bread that you need all the sufficiency that you need, that everything you sold was multiplied, that even the, your, your right standing with God was increased because of you abounding in his grace of giving. Would you be thankful? How thankful would you be? What thanksgiving would go up to God because of this thing that he has done for you? Okay, because of your heart to abound in the grace of giving. See, this, look, most of the things that God gives us access to is not for him, it's for us. There's nothing that God needs from us, okay? He desires our love for him, our compassion for him. He desires our attention towards him. He desires that we receive his love from him, but there's nothing of necessity that God needs from us or he wants us or needs us to do for him. He is the God of, 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 of abundance. He is a God of love. He wants to care and do for us. So he gives us this avenue, this ability, this grace to abound in giving, right? So that he can then cause his blessing to shower upon it. That's why whatever man sow it, that's what he reads. That's why when you give, it is given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together. That is the reason why it happened. God causes this to happen when you take on his heart, his desire, his motive, okay? His intent, his power, his word, his voice. His heart to be a giver and bless others, meet the needs of the same, express his love towards them because of your gift. You take on poverty, and poverty doesn't mean poverty, poor. It means that you sacrifice, you give of yourself. You become less when you make that exchange. That's what it's saying to us. Yes, you, you, you don't have as much now when you take and hand that over and give to other people. That is what it's referencing, but here's the thing. When you do that, you actually increase the abundance of your supply increase the abundance of your joy and your uh, the manifestation of his power in your life. Increase the blessing because it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Father, I want to thank you tonight. We're finished. I want to thank you for your power and your grace. I bless every person that hears my words and I call them givers. I call them sowers. And if they're sowers, God, then they're reapers. And I thank you, God, that their heart is to give. I declare that, that their heart is to be like you and have your motive of love for your people, that their heart is empowered by the words that we've shared and we've spoken to abound in this grace of giving, not by extortion, not because of covetousness, 
but they will be cheerful, hilarious, and glorious givers. And you will look at them and be pleased. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen and amen. Amen. <clears throat> Dr. Tim, you got me messed up on that one. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, God uh, on Jesus. Um, <laughs> you, you know, as, as you were teaching, uh, something had came to my mind uh, about about a little over 12 years ago. I actually used to have a, an online ministry called uh, Kingdom Foundation Ministries. And, uh, and and I used to get these, uh, you know, odd requests here and there. People would be asking for stuff. Uh, but there was one one gentleman uh, from from the Philippines. And, and I was skeptical. Uh, but for somehow, some way, he and I really connected uh, some work that he was doing over in the Philippines, and, and he made a request, and he asked for for some money, and uh, and we didn't have it going on like that back then, but I knew that the Lord was telling me to, yeah, stop, yeah, you know? yeah. And, and and he was sending me pictures, and you know about the work that they were doing, and, and I just wanted to support what they were doing. And uh, and so we sold. Uh, me and my wife, you know, we we believed that it was the right thing to do. And literally the next day, you know, yeah. and uh, I mean, just you, you, what you were sharing today just really just flooding all of it back. But the the next day, a ministry I've never heard of. It was I think it was called Fish and Loaves Ministry. <laughs> I've, I've never heard of them. They sold <laughs> over the amount that we had given to this guy. That's the way it works. I, I, I mean, and so, so what you're saying, <laughs> right? And, and, and it's all about heart. It's yeah. all about heart, right? If you were you weren't looking for anything back, hmm. right? You just were intrigued by what they were doing. You wanted to help, okay? And you sold according to your ability, even beyond your ability. And we think, you know, what what, what we think uh, now when we do what we're doing. The way we're doing it today, we don't see that kind of activity. Okay, we don't see, it, and that's what should be happening. Okay, if you realize this, folk, if you get your heart right, like this, like we're talking about, like this passage script, throw out the law, throw out the letter, throw out what you've been taught. Okay, and the religiousness of it in this area, throw out the fear. Throw out the bad experience of your past, the extortion that has taken place, that has made you anxious, that has made you fearful, that has made you offended by giving, okay? Just throw that away and forgive it and start to do this with a heart and a grace as a privilege to be able to give. I don't care if it's a dime. I don't care if it's a dollar. It may be thousands of dollars for those of you that are there that are able to do that, but don't let the amount stop you from doing it. Get into it with your heart and realize that the amount does not matter. Make your heart big enough with God, okay, that it'll turn two pennies into millions of dollars when it enters into the kingdom. That is what you want. And I'm telling you, just like Brother Dexter just said, you will see the result of it. And look, I personally, I'm going to say this because I get nothing out of you giving. Okay. The only thing I get right now out of you giving, I'm not, you're not in my church. You're not, I'm just simply telling you how you can really experience the blessings of God in this area. I have nothing in it. Okay. Because it's working for me. My God. Okay, it's working for me. It's working for other people. It's working for Brother Dexter. You know, it's other people that it's working for who can testify. And even on this call, I'm pretty sure people who can testify. But for those few who have not, take advantage of what the word that God has given to you. Jesus. Woo! <laughs> Dr. Tim, I appreciate that so much tonight. Amen. Uh, uh, for those who are on social media, uh, we're getting ready to close out on Facebook. But if you want to be a part of the uh, the Zoom community, uh, we continue the conversation a little bit further, uh, time of question and answer. Uh, send us an inbox. We'll make sure to get you that information uh, so you could be a part of the uh, actual Zoom call. But with that being said, uh, we look forward to seeing you all next week. Uh, and God bless. Whew.